Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We bow your heads and pray with me. Blessed Lord, grant to me your Holy Spirit that my words would be your words. Grant to your people your Holy Spirit that they would hear your words and be edified by them. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we continue our midweek Lenten services and our sermon series, which is titled Promised Treasures. Uh, during this sermon series, uh, Pastor Tyner and I will be talking, taking various objects that are mentioned throughout the scriptures, highlighting them, how our Lord has used them to show us what he has done for us. Last week, appropriately for Ash Wednesday, the object was ashes. Today, we're going to be talking about salt. Salt, which is one of the most commonly used objects in the world. All of you probably have salt in your home. And in the wider world, salt has been indispensable for millennia. Salt was such a precious commodity in the lives of ancient people that they kept it everywhere in their homes. In fact, it is thought that soldiers were often paid with salt at one point in history. And the word, the word salary actually comes from the Latin word salarium, which means salt. That's how valuable salt was at one point in time, just so people could preserve their food to keep it from spoiling before we had refrigeration. In the church, salt has been used for millennia as well. In, in fact, in many of the early baptismal rites, after the newly baptized, especially if they were an adult, uh, after they had renounced the devil and all of his works, after they had confessed their faith with the Apostles' Creed, they would take a pinch of salt and place it on their tongue to, to symbolize that they are now seasoned now. With the, with the salt of Christ. In fact, because of this, Martin Luther, in some of his earliest writings about baptism, included the use of salt in the, in the baptismal rite. Uh, but because of its, its many and varied uses, it's, it's no wonder then that salt features prominently throughout the scriptures. The Bible refers to salt in several different ways, talks about how it's used in several different ways. Four of those ways that it's used is to season, to heal, to preserve, and interestingly, to destroy. And so this little sermon is going to talk about all four of those uses using various uh, passages from Scripture. The book of Leviticus, in fact, requires that certain offerings to God be seasoned with salt before they're placed on the altar. And as we heard just a little bit ago in our Old Testament reading from 2 Kings, the prophet Elisha used salt to heal bad, undrinkable water for the people of Israel. The water was so bad in the city of Jericho that, Jericho that nobody could use it. People were literally dying. Babies weren't being born because the, the drinking water was so bad. So Elisha took a bowl of salt, tossed it into a spring of water, and miraculously threw that salt into that spring of water. God healed the water. He made that bitter, sour water drinkable again. And perhaps that sheds a little light or enhances maybe the words of Christ from our gospel reading today when he says that you are the salt of the earth. Jesus calls you the salt of the earth, meaning that your life has been seasoned. It has been salted and that you are to season and salt the lives of others, the lives of those around you. And then finally, in Psalm 107, which we recited responsibly a few moments ago, we see the destructive nature of salt. A fruitful land dies and becomes a salty waste. The salt destroys everything. It's so thick that nothing can grow. Nothing can live there. It's like the, the Dead Sea is so salty, no fish, no plants can live in that salty environment. So as you can see throughout the scriptures, salt's uses are many and varied. That's held true throughout the history of the church down to this very day in our very lives. Just as the water in Jericho was sour and bitter, in our lives we have experiences that can be sour and bitter. And it's in those sour and bitter experiences that Jesus comes to season, to preserve, and to heal. To heal you through his word, through his sacraments. You are God's own dear child, washed, baptized, cleansed, and healed salted by Christ. This Lenten walk, these 40 days, reminds us that Jesus died on Calvary's cross to heal us completely from our diseases of sin and death. 
The ancient people of God used salt to preserve meat and other food so that they would last much longer. And when the priests offered, as I said a little while ago, when the priests offered grain offerings, they salted them before placing them on the altar. The preservation and this keeping also took place when God saved each one of you. Jesus died as the sacrifice, as the offering that was given to God, that salted offering. He was given on the cross to heal you and save you from your diseased life. And because he was salted for you, offered up for you, death no longer has any hold on you. Your life has been preserved in his precious death. And even though this temporal life will end, this present life will come to an end, we don't place any hope in this life. Our frail mortal bodies, because Jesus was raised from the dead, our frail mortal bodies will also one day be raised from the dead to a pure, eternal body. You are living a life that is preserved forever. And that news seasons life and, and directs it with renewed joy and renewed purpose. Purpose because not everybody in this world has that comfort. Not everybody can say that they have that preservation, that eternal preservation that you and I as Christians have. That you and I as Christians have. This type of salt isn't something that we are born with. It's something that God gives to us. He gives it to us through his word and sacraments. In holy baptism, in holy communion, and in hearing his holy word, God continually seasons and salts our lives. He comes to us to heal, to preserve, to keep us all the time. That's why St. Paul says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Your saltiness literally makes you hopeful and joyful. And Christ's word is the source of seasoning in your lives. And it's that seasoning that the world needs. It's that salt, the salt of Christ that the world needs. Because the salt of Christ is destructive to the world. It's like a, a car that has spent too much time at the coast, right? That salt spray coming off of the Gulf starts to tear away at that covering of paint on the outside of it. Once it gets through that, it starts to eat away at the metal underneath until eventually that car has become nothing but a roving pile of rust. The gospel salt of Christ works like that salt spray coming off the Gulf. As it blows in, it tears away the covering of sin. It tears away, it eats away the schemes of the devil, and it turns hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. And sometimes, as we are out there doing our work for the Lord, praying for our loved ones that they would come to know Christ, or maybe even just praying for the man on the street to come to know Christ, we wonder, why isn't this happening? Why is this taking so long? Well, just like that salt spray coming off the gulf takes years to eat away at a car, that gospel salt of Christ can sometimes be the same way. It doesn't happen overnight. But our task as the salt of the earth is to keep seasoning and salting our lives and those around us with Jesus. Season your words and season your work with Christ. And because you're doing that, in his own time, Christ will do his work. Eating away, tearing away, turning those hearts of stones into hearts of flesh. Because, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is with you now, seasoning and preserving your life. And the lives of all of those around you, through you, who are the salt of the earth. You have been healed from the diseases of sin and death. The only way that your salt is depleted or lost is when you fail to hear God's word and receive his sacraments because it's in his word and sacraments that Jesus promises to preserve you, to keep you, to heal you, and to destroy the sin and death 
that resides within you. By his resurrection from the dead, you are now the salt of the earth. He works through you. You are the seasoning salt, the healing salt, the preserving salt, and the destructive salt that the world so desperately needs. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen.